the sharp iron. We are all here to sharpen one another. Iron sharpens iron. We all that are called and chosen by God take a leap of faith every day, our, knowing that our steps are ordered by God, that God has ordered every step that we will take. But while you're taking that leap of faith and you're taking those steps that have been ordered by God, be aware that the enemy is laying his snares that he lays a trap for us and a snare every day to catch us in. He does. He will set a stumbling block before us to cause us to stumble and to fall. The enemy never stops. He's never going to quit, and neither are we. We will continue to do the work that God has called us to do while it is day. You and I know that the night is coming when no one can work in that night. Even the wicked cannot rest in the night unless they have shed innocent blood. Unless they have brought someone down. That's the reason why they riot in the streets. And those that hear the voices of the enemy are tormented. They are paralyzed with fear. They cannot rest. They cannot sleep. They are driven by the spirits of devils that are truly working in them, that have power over them. And they torment them. And they are tormented souls that can't sleep. They cannot rest until they have done wickedness. And they are the lawless ones. They're not happy unless they're persecuting someone. They cannot find peace unless they are accusing someone and firing the fiery darts at them of the wicked. They cannot rest until they have done evil. Unless they have brought pain and suffering and sorrow to someone. Therefore, we are to be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. We are to watch and pay attention, slow to speak. Because we do not want to fall into the trap and the snares of the enemy. And by moving too quickly, by moving too fast, moving out of our time, our appointed time, our season, we may fall into the snares and the traps of the enemies because we did not pay attention. We were not alert. We were not watchful. We were not praying. You see, when we're praying and we're watching, and we are slow to move. We are more aware. We are more alert. So today is a day that we will be going out feed the hungry, to clothe those that are naked, to visit those that are shut in. Definitely, our steps are ordered by God, but we will be aware of the snares and the traps that the enemy has laid to trap us in, because he is working to stop the workers those that are working for the kingdom of heaven to stop us from sowing the good seeds. Even Jesus said to his disciples, that they that loved him, clothed him when he was naked, fed him when he was hungry, visited him when he was in prison, his disciples said, Lord, when did we do any of these things to you? He said, when you have done it unto the least of one of these, you have done it unto me. My brother Larry is a man of God in everything he does. He does in the name of Jesus. 
everything that I do, Brother Preston does, and everything that you do also, we all do not for the glory of ourselves. We're doing in the name of Jesus for the glory of God because faith without works is dead. But while you're out there working for the kingdom of heaven, be very much aware that there is an enemy that is working to stop you. That he has laid traps and snares to catch you with. Many, many years ago, I shared this on YouTube about the little bunny rabbit. And it is funny how the Holy Spirit of God will show us things and he will compare it to something. And he showed me a vision of a trap and a little bunny rabbit. And inside of the trap was a carrot. And I could see the little bunny rabbit just hopping along on his little merry way. And he saw the carrot. But he did not see the trap. And he wanted that carrot so bad he would do anything to have that carrot. So he rushes in to get the one thing that he desired the most was the carrot. But he didn't pay attention to the trap. And the trap fell on the little rabbit, and he was caught within the snare and the trap. And the Holy Spirit of God spoke to me, and he said, My friend, do not be like the little rabbit. If you will move slowly, and you will take your time, and watch and pray, you will see the trap, the snare that the enemy has laid to trap you and snare you with. Do not look at the one thing that you desire to have the most. But if you will take the time to look around for the snares and the trap that the enemy has laid to trap you with. And then Brother Preston, I shared that with Brother Preston, and he was thinking out loud, and he said, Yeah, but if the devil can't trap you in the trap and in the snare, he can certainly beat you with the carrot. I said, that's true also. We have to be aware, be alert, be vigilant because the enemy is always trying to catch us within the snare. And I said to Brother Preston, but you know what? I'm going to pray that the snare and the trap that the enemies have laid to trap me with, they will fall into their own trap and be caught within their own snare. And what evil they intended for me and you will be turned around to the good for us, but for the evil for them. You see, what they sowed, they shall reap. That's the law of sowing and reaping. What they sowed, they shall reap. Make no mistakes about that. Make no mistakes about that. God has a Appointed time for all things and a season for all things. And we know that as seasoned Christians that is well salted with the seasoning of God. That we are to be alert and we are to be watchful because our enemy, the devil, is walking about roaring like a lion to put fear in you, to make you afraid, to move, to step out in faith to do the work of God. That's the reason why he attacks you every time you preach the gospel. Because he wants you to stop. Well, we're not stopping. Because we know that even the attacks of the enemy has been shortened. That God is even shortening the attacks. And even the power of that attack because many years ago, the Holy Spirit of God, oh man, this was a lesson learned, I'm telling you. This was a lesson learned for me. I kept going through the same things every day. Every day. And then one day I'm in an argument with my husband, and I'm about to go left. And the Holy Spirit speaks to me, and he says, stop. Stop right now. And see the two roads that are before you. Because there's two roads. And you've been down one of these roads so many times 
you should know the end of that road. You know the beginning of it, you know how it started, and you know the end of it. And it has never worked out good on your behalf, has it? And I said, no, my Lord, it hasn't. He said, well, is this not a lesson learned for you? That if laid out before you are two roads and two choices, and you already know the road that you continue to take, then avoid that road. The power is in your hands. Take the other road. And make a new decision and a new choice. To do nothing. To say nothing. To shut your mouth. Even a fool is considered wise when he shuts his own mouth. And that was certainly a lesson I learned a long time ago. Because it's not worth it. Yeah, we can all go down that road and we can render evil for evil and railing for railing. And you know, we can hold our ground and talk all kinds of trash. But what was that going to profit me? And what was that going to profit my husband? Sometimes it takes the bigger Christian. And I always say to Brother Preston, I'm a big enough Christian to take the new road. He said, Amen. Take the better road, the better way, because there truly is, there is two roads that are laid out before us, and we have that choice to make. I don't want to keep going down the same road that didn't profit me anything, didn't get me anywhere, but made me miserable, made my husband miserable, and to say things out of the heat of anger that later on you're going to have to repent of, you're going to have to ask God to forgive you, and then you have to ask the person that you said it to to forgive you. They say, uh, words doesn't hurt you, but they do. Words hurt. So there is an abuse of words. Words do bruise us. They do hurt us. So I learned that lesson a long time ago, and I learned it the hard way, but nevertheless, I learned that lesson. So when I am in the heat of anger, I used to take the duct tape and put it over my mouth until the Holy Spirit of God said to me, No, no more. You're going to show God that you are a mature enough Christian, that your mouth does not need to be taped up, that you have control over your own body. I said, Amen, my Lord, Amen. To whom much is given, much is required. I see what you are requiring of me, and I say and pray by the power of the Holy Ghost and by the power of the blood of the Lamb of God that I can guard my own mouth, shut my own mouth, have power over my own mouth. So far, it's been working by the power of God. Because you see, to whom much is given, much is required. If we cannot control our own body, then what good are we to God? We have to be able to control our own self. Not to allow the body to be unruly, but to bring it under submission, under the power and the authority of the Word of God. That's what God expects of all of us, not just me. You see, this Word ain't just for me. This Word is for all of you also. Who's out there being unruly. Because many years ago, See, I have people that come to my house to hear me preach this good word. Pray for me, church. The enemy's trying to go after my voice. And I had noticed that every time we gather together, and it's mostly women, that enemy would work in one of my family members. And for me, to say something, to do something, to act out of my flesh that would cause these women to see me in a different light than what they were seeing me in. And then I would hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. Whatever you do, don't cause my little lambs to stumble. I said, no, my Lord. I would not want to hurt the little lambs of God. So I would sit there 
and just tell the women, we won't pay attention to this. We will pray. Let us all gather together and hold hands and come in agreement that God will take authority over this situation and that whatever the enemy intended for evil this day, God will turn it around for the good. And I'm telling you something, church, after these women and I came in agreement and prayed over that situation, immediately it stopped. So what the devil intended that day, he did not accomplish it because I knew to pray. I knew to take authority over it. That's the power of God right there, church, and it'll work for you too. So anytime you see that unruliness, among your family members that's trying to move you into quick anger and wrath, take hands. Pray about it. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Put the Word of God on it. Put the power that you have and the authority in the Word of God, in the name of Jesus Christ, in prayer. There is power in prayer. And then God gets the glory. Because it was God who turned it around for the good. I know, church, I'm telling you, I can, I am speaking from experience. Because you see, there's two roads right before you. And one of them, you've been down too many times. You know the end of that road, and it's an end of misery. And it never turns out well, and it never, there's no victory in it. There's nothing. It's endless misery. That stop doing it. The sign of insanity, and I remind everyone I talk to, is that you continue to do the same things over and over again, and you expect a change. How are you going to get change, a change in your life over the things that you continue to do over and over again, and know that at the end of it, it doesn't profit you anything. It does not give glory to God. It does not bring forth victory. So why do it? If it's not working for you, then stop it. You have the power to change. And it's never too late. It is never too late. So if you want to make changes and you want to see a different outcome and you want to see that victory, Working in your life because victory will work in your life. There is victory. I know. Then you got to choose the other road. Anytime there's an uprising, and there will be, you know they will be, the first thing you should do immediately is take authority over it. Go into prayer. I don't care if your husband and your wife or your children is spitting out some ugly words, and I mean they're talking some trash, and you know you want to knock them upside the head. You know you do, because we all do. And you want to render evil for evil and railing for railing. Well, that's the wrong road right there. You know that's the wrong road. It don't take a Bible scholar to figure that one out. If you're moving in the same way they're moving against you, then you know that outcome is not going to be a victorious one and you're not going to win. And they're not going to win and you're going to wish you hadn't said anything. They're going to wish they hadn't said anything. But we want victory, church. We want victory. We want to win. We want to overcome. We want to put the devil to shame. By doing so, we stop. And we take a moment. Have you ever heard your parents say, count to ten? Before you say anything, sometimes many of us should be counting instead of talking. Because if you'll take a moment, church, I'm talking from experience here. I know because I've been there and I've done that. And I see that it doesn't profit me anything. It doesn't give glory to God. It is worthless chatter. It is. It's worthless. And we are held accountable for every word that comes out of our mouth. So what are you producing over there? The Holy Spirit of God told me, he said, if you don't like bananas, then stop planting bananas. I said, my Lord, I'm not planting bananas. He said, if you don't like 
what you're reaping, then stop sowing it. I said, yes, my Lord, I hear you, I hear you, I do, I hear you. Well, I tell you, he'll get you, won't he? He will, he'll rebuke you. I don't know how many times he's rebuked me, but he does it in love. He doesn't do it to condemn us. He does it for an example to show us what we are doing wrong and what we need to be doing. So, in the times that my family acts a fool, and they will, mm -mm -mm, I've seen it too many times. I have seen it too many times. I will pray immediately because I feel it in my flesh. You think I don't? You think I don't feel it in my flesh? It rising up in me and wanting me to jump up immediately and start doing the same thing they're doing. Mm -mm -mm -mm. I've been down that road too many times. I don't like that road. I do not like that road. Matter of fact, I hate that road. I'd rather be beaten than go down that road because I know what it's going to produce and it's going to be a road of misery. So now by what the Holy Spirit of God has revealed to me on how to act, what to do in those situations is to be still. Take a moment. Take authority over the situation. Bring it under submission. Under submission under the word of and the will and the power of God himself. Take it to prayer immediately. That's right. We were all gathered together here last night on the front porch, and we were playing cards with my little granddaughter because she likes to play Uno. And we were up there playing, and I saw a situation kind of rising up. Immediately, I started to pray. And then everybody started laughing. Immediately, God took authority. Because you see, it could have went down a different way. A lot of people could have been offended. But God did not allow that seed to be sown. Church, the Holy Spirit of God said to me, You are the keeper of your garden. You cannot allow the enemy to sow tares in your garden. You have to root it up. You have to cast it out. You're the keeper of your garden. You can't allow that enemy to sow corruption among your beautiful garden. We're sowing good seeds. Good seeds of the word of God in our garden. Anything else, we'll root it up and we'll throw it out of our garden. We have to. So the next time and there will be a next time. You know they will. That situation arises up in your family members or with anyone you meet, friends, family. When you see that spirit of unruliness and that enemy rising up his old evil, wicked head, you got to take it to God in prayer immediately. Even ask that person that's being unruly, hey, will you pray with me? Come on now. Let's take this right here to God in prayer. You and I, let's bring it before God. And let's allow him to work this out for the good for both of us. Because it won't profit me anything or you anything for railing, for railing, accusation for accusation. But let us take it to God in prayer. And let him take authority over the situation. And work everything out for the good to those that believe and trust in him. That's how it's done, church. I know. I am speaking from experience. And I tell you what, I'm not going down that road again. I've been down it too many times. I want to go down the road of victory. I want to win that victory. I want to bruise the serpent's head. Amen, and I know you do also. So that's a lesson learned. So that's my two cents. I hope and pray you'll use it wisely because it, I don't want you to continue to keep going around that mountain, to keep going down that same miserable road because it won't profit you anything. It won't profit them anything, and there'll be no victory won. I'm all about the victory. 
Victory is always on the, the way. Amen. I want that victory through my Lord, my Savior, Jesus Christ. And the only way we're going to get it is to take it to God in prayer. When you see the situation rising up, and you will immediately, don't wait till it's all said and done. Immediately, take actions. And the person that's unruly, ask them to join you in prayer. Let us take it before the Lord in prayer. You and I come in agreement that God knows best for both of us, you and I. That God wants the best and wishes above all that we prosper and be in good health. Because words hurt. They do. Words hurt. So before those words and those fiery darts are fired at one another, you see, you think the enemy is the one that's firing those fiery darts. Uh Uh-huh. Yep. That's what we all think. But I'm here to tell you by the power of the Holy Ghost that I've been guilty of it myself. Don't think I haven't, because I have. And it took the Holy Spirit to reveal to me, are you the enemy? And I said, my Lord. He said, is it not the enemy that fires the fiery darts of the wicked? And I said, my Lord, what are you saying? He said, I'm saying that you are doing the work of the enemy. If you are firing fiery darts at someone, and they are firing fiery darts at you, then where is the shield of faith, my friend? He made me cry. Lord, don't make me cry. He made me cry that day because he made me look at myself. And when I took a look at myself, I didn't like what I saw because I was guilty. I was guilty of doing the same thing that was being done to me. I couldn't fire those fiery darts fast enough. I don't want the fiery darts. I don't want to fire any fiery darts at anyone. I want to lift up the shield of faith, not only for myself, that other person also. I want them to lift up that shield of faith and to take it to God in prayer. Because the devil has enough of workers working for him. God needs as many workers working for the kingdom of heaven. And I want to be counted in that number with those that are lifting up the shield of faith instead of those that are firing the fiery, wicked darts of the wicked. Because accusation, accusing someone, condemning someone, is not the way to get it done. But let you and I lift up together the shield of faith and bring the Father, the Word, into play, into action. And let us lift up that shield of faith. I hope and pray that someone is blessed by this word. Because I was led by the Holy Spirit of God. That someone needs to hear this word today. And if you are that person. I pray that you are ready to receive it. And that you win the victory through your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, today. That you have learned your lesson and you want to choose the road, the path to victory. The victory that glorifies God because to whom much is given, much is required. I pray for you today to have your victory through your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Have a blessed and victorious day today, my dear, dear, precious friends. In Jesus Christ, most holy name, we pray and let the church say amen and amen. Let us lift up the shield of faith for one another. Amen. Because everything we do, our light is not to glorify ourselves. 
but to glorify our Father who is in heaven, that men may see your good works and know that your works of faith, because faith without works is dead, that we don't have dead faith, that our faith is alive and our faith is living through our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ, because in Christ Jesus we can do all things. Amen. Amen. Think on these things today, church. Think on these things. God bless you.